Platform Media International uh, Political Arena. Uh, tonight we are talking about the regional security arrangement across the uh, landscape of Nigeria. And of course, this is uh, uh, this was brought up. It became necessary to have a regional security arrangement because of the prevalent insecurity situation in Nigeria. It is no news anymore that uh, life has become too cheap in Nigeria because of the activities of the Meyati um, uh, Allah or headsmen, because uh, they are alleged to have been kidnapping, raping, and robbing people across Nigeria. So other regions are beginning to agitate to have a regional um, security arrangement. As I speak to you, we have the Amotepo in the Southwest. Uh, before we go further, let me introduce the very familiar face of this program, Obi, is the Obi, welcome to the program. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Obi, uh, this has become necessary for us to discuss on this program uh, because be, a boat out of the blues, Amotekun was established some months ago. And uh, we know that the federal government has kicked against this. And there's this strong argument that people are making that. Uh, because of the prevalent insecurity situation in Nigeria, there's the need not to have a regional security force. Is this the right thing to do? Uh, maybe and maybe not. Uh, from our experience in the past, uh, we know that in Nigeria, uh, state police, uh, regional police had not all got well for the unity of the nation. Uh, politicians or uh, highly placed individuals had always sub subverted that local institution, the, the state police, for their own ends. You know, with, it led to riots in TV land in 1945, uh, the Operation Weti in, in 1964-65 in, in Western Nigeria was as a result of state police, you know, being used by politicians to oppress uh, the citizenry or those who are opposed to their political views. So in advocating a regional political structure, while it is desirable, uh, Nigeria needs to tread cautiously if it must learn from the lessons of the past. You know, those, those are my views. It, it is a necessary end. The, the Nigerian police, a centralized police in Nigeria uh, is unable to, to meet the demands placed on it. Uh, we have kidnappings taking place. We have sophistication in armed robbery. We have corruption. We have murder. You know, we have all kinds of crimes uh, across the length and breadth of Nigeria. Uh, and the police is underfunded. They do not have enough human resources and they are incapable of meeting the demands of securing Nigeria at the moment. Uh, so, so, so for regions to, to say we're going to look after our own interests might not all go well in the long run uh, for the unity of the country. Well, Obi, this, uh, this uh, re regional security arrangement has become, uh, like I said before, it's become um, people agitating for it, given the fact of uh, the activities of Meyati Allah or uh, the activities of the headsmen, they are alleged to be the perpetrators of this um, uh, kidnapping, currency of kidnapping and, uh, and killing in the south, in the south, uh, southeast, southwest, and middle bed. And government has not done well to, in this sense to reassure people and to secure people because one of the cardinal programs of government is uh, security for the people. That's true. I will tell you that uh, Buhari, President Buhari is not doing very, very well at all. He's doing badly in this aspect. And that's why people are saying, okay, if the government cannot help us, let us, uh, let us go for self-help. I did not try to do this. Oh, well, that, that's true. Uh, uh, there's no need to say that Buhari is not doing well. Uh, he has been accused openly by ex-retired uh, 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 General Danjuma. Uh, that uh, the president is a willing 
participant in the murder of uh, people uh, under the guise of uh, his men. Uh, he is not ordering security forces to stop the kidnappers. Uh, the police are not responding when they are called to intervene in cases of uh, kidnappings and killings by Meiti, Allah, and Kato Esmet. Uh, so uh, the president uh, is pursuing a fulanization policy. Uh, Nigerians didn't understand this when they voted for him, but he has come out in his true colors that his intention is to cause the Fulanis to have an upper hand in Nigeria. He started this uh, by allocating all security positions to Fulanis or people of Northern extraction. Uh, he has done everything to skew security in favor of the Fulanis. So uh, people are forced to defend themselves. But what we're asking is, is it the right thing to do? Will it all go well for the long-term unity of the country? Or do we uh, want to approach it on a holistic base? Uh, uh, I do agree, you know, that for a, on a stopgap policy, uh, it, it, it is good to react the way Southwest has reacted. But on the long term, we need to be thinking and talking about uh, things that would help us move forward as a nation. Well, yeah, just today, uh, uh, president, former president of Nigeria, Basadio, accused uh, President Buhari government of uh, aiding and abetting. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm aware that close sources have told me that even when there is a reported uh, case of a kidnapping, even the Nigerian police is uh, scared to, 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 react. to react because even the people that are the headsmen are more, are more equipped than the Nigerian police. And you cannot, nobody can rule out the, the, the connivance of the states or the support of the state given that they are given to these headsmen. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in that situation, um, it, is not, it is not out of place for people. If a former head of state can accuse you, of course, you know the fraternity between head of state. They don't criticize each other. They don't say that has been there. But Obasa Joha have broken ranks with this. And if a former head of state can say that, that shows a very, very uh, serious issue that President Buhari is, should deal with. But he's not showing any, any, any intention to do that at all, despite this serious allegation. No, that's what I just said. Uh, he, he, is taken, he has taken side with his people to oppress others in Nigeria. It is not left for, uh, for other people to defend themselves. But what I'm saying is that uh, the, 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 the Amotekun that we have in the Southwest should not be seen as a, as a permanent solution. Uh, because if it were to be a permanent solution, there are series of legal hoops that it needs to cross. Uh, for instance, uh, we don't have, uh, we do have the Southwest zone in Nigeria, but we don't have a constitutionally mandated administrative structure for that Southwest region. So you cannot have a police force in a situation where there's a vacuum. There is yeah. no regional administrative setup to look after the interest of, uh, because uh, of they that police. Yeah, I got you there because uh, uh, the responsibility for security and armed forces is, uh, belongs to the exclusive rights which the federal government uh, superintends, correct? Yes. And yes. Uh, any, any state or region that try to establish a counter security force will be going against the constitutional provision. Of, of Nigeria, yes. But well, what do you think the senators and the representatives the, the idol about why Nigeria is being plundered by the headsmen. Don't you think this school should do something if the executive arm is not doing anything? Uh, they should, but uh, under the terms of the 1999 Constitution, uh, it, it, it is difficult. The Constitution was created in such a way that it is unamendable. You know, the senators in themselves are unable to amend the Constitution to create this regional force. You know, the only way we can do it is by having uh, a, a sovereign national conference or some form of national conference whereby the different ethnic nationalities of Nigeria will come together 
and decide that this is the way we want to go forward. Uh, if you wanted to amend the constitution, the senators from the north will not agree to it. You know, you need to make the amendment in the Senate, you need to send it to the different houses of assembly to ratify before it comes back to, to Abuja to become law. And that is impossible. So it, the, 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 that constitution, the way it was structured, may not be amended. So the, the senators, are, uh, their, their hands are tied. There is very little they can do about this arrangement. In it. Look, the only thing I can suggest that is possible is like when we had rising crimes in, in Anambra State, for instance, the government used uh, the Bakasi boys to deal with the issue. You know, that's an extrajudicial process, and that's the kind of situation we can use, you know, measure we can use to deal with the uh, uh, Hesman crisis. You know, hire these guys, whether they be Bakasi, whether they be Ebisu boys, whether they be Niger Delta militants, to deal with these issues. And then when the nation is prepared to discuss it, on a conference table, then we table proposals for to that effect. I I, I also want to say that, 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 that you bring in this issue that uh, uh, people a uh, counter force to deal with this is what I call a extrajudicial force to deal with this issue. Yeah, they, that's that uh, brings us to the saying that to those who make peace with change impossible makes violent change possible. Because course, yeah. because people can't travel by road anymore. It's only the poor people travel the road. The rich ones or the middle middle income people fly because they feel that the uh, road transportation is unsafe. Even when people are in their homes, they come to their homes in the middle of the night, even the broad daylight to kidnap them. Um, will this not lead to crisis? Um, there are two ways I want to ask this question. If this extrajudicial extra judicial body is set up, will it not lead to crisis? Two, if the judicial, but if the states or regions decide to establish a extrajudicial force, if it will make government to react, will not be good. Oh, it would be. It would be. Uh, the, if the federal government cannot guarantee the security of life and property, it falls on the states uh, yes. to do that. You know, uh, so any state government that folds their hand and allows their people to be slaughtered is it, an irresponsible state. You know, the governor of uh, Governor Tom of uh, is it Benue State or Benue State? You know, has been doing a lot to defend uh, his people. And that's uh, the, the attitude every other state governor, Governor Wike of Port Harcourt, you know, is prepared to sacrifice his life uh, to defend the interests of people of River State. Uh, that is his mandate. You know, that is what we expect of the governors of Anambra, Imo, uh, uh, Abia, Eboi you know, to toe the same lines. You, you have to do whatever is needed to defend your people. Governors are allowed to buy arms. They are allowed to store arms. They are allowed to equip a force, you know, to, 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 to defend their people. Uh, the, the last governor of uh, Ogun State handed over more than 10,000 rifles to the Nigerian police. So there's no reason why any state could not acquire arms to defend their people. You know, to, to choose not to do so is like to go into alliance with Meiti Allah for purposes of being reelected or for winning political favors from the North, you know, in the, against the interest of your people. That is wrong. I must admit that some of the state governors are, are not uh, living up to their expectations because in the Nigerian constitution, they are, they are regarded as the chief security officers of the state. I don't know what, where you cannot defend, when you cannot protect your citizens. I don't know why you should, have, you should admit that title as the chief security officer of the state. Which, well, constitutionally, you know, constitutionally is a title on, on paper alone because uh, the state governors don't have control over the police, you know, they, they are allowed to give directives to the police commissioner in their respective states. But that police commissioner then refers that instruction from the governor to the inspector general of police where it can be approved or denied. So the, the state governor actually is not the chief security officer in his state. Uh, it's just there in the constitution for purposes of stating that uh, a governor uh, is the chief security officer of his state. He's not. 
you know, but governors who are governors would go the extra mile to be the chief security officer of his state. If the constitution doesn't allow it, then he will have to find a way uh, to make it an imperative uh, action. I must admit that I want to take an extreme position here because it says a, a, an action begets a reaction where people are being slaughtered. And I, I have been an advocate, I have been very, very, um, uh, I've taken this issue up with a lot of people. Why would people, uh, it, is a, it, it is a good argument amongst uh, in African parlance that when somebody carries a fight to your house, okay, people say everything you have will fight. Everything, everything you implore to, uh, to defend yourself is, is, uh, is uh, legitimate. So why this has been going on for years now, and I even spoke to one of my friends who is a who is a retired Navy captain in the Middle Bed. He told me that he established a farm, but the herdsmen just brought their cows and eat up all the crops. And the man said he's helpless. And I asked him why, at your level, why are you not defending? He said, Well, we are waiting for Buhari to go before we defend ourselves. So what if you don't wait, if you don't leave until Buhari, if you are not alive before Buhari leaves? What happened? So why are the Saturners or the Middle Betters not taking action to defend themselves? Why are they? Is is why? I have to ask that question. Or maybe perhaps we may know. <laughs> there, 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 are, there are two reasons for that. One of the reasons is that uh, uh, in my own political parlance, I, I call them non-organic governors. These are not the governors of the people. They were not willingly elected by a majority of the people. They, they either rigged themselves into, into power or they were imposed by the people like we had uh, in, in, in Imo State. And so such governors cannot act in the interest of their people. They will only act to protect the interests of those who sponsor them, who sponsor into, them. Into, into office. And so the, the second reason is the reason of corruption. Uh, if certain governors were to take up a position to stand up against uh, the Fulani Hesmen, the EFCC will be after them the next second because the, the, there are documented cases of corruption against them. And so they are terrified. You know, some of them did not win the elections clearly, and the Supreme Court is always willing to overturn the table against them. So. In a recent, they are not governors. They are terrified and uh, they, they cannot act. Obi, um, in warfare, who, who should shoot first win? Mm. Now, <laughs> in your own house, you know all the corners and corners. In your village, you know the terrain. You know the the, the where where is where where you can hide and where you can um, de uh, deal with your enemies. So people cannot go further into the bush in my area where I come from because they, have, they, they told me that herdsmen are living in the forest and therefore they can't even go there. And that is puzzling because in our days when we were growing up, our fathers go through all this place. So even with a, a AK-47, with a dang gun, OB, I'm going through the herdsmen because this is, is, is hurting me badly. With a dang gun, if you shoot first, you win. So why would a, an AK-47 person just take over your land and you are afraid to go out when you know the terrain? Assuming that the governors have been compromised, that our people also compromised? <laughs> our people are terrified. Nigerians have been scared and uh, that they've been pushed against the wall, you know, and someone said they've been pushed through the wall. There's almost nothing Nigerians can do now. They, they've adopted uh, the attitude of uh, wait and see. Wait and see. Let's see if we can survive the next three years of Buhari, and then we can pick our lives up again. You know, it will be pointless fighting against him. Uh, he's uncompromising. He has acted irresponsibility. He has shown that he does not have the interests of the nation at heart. And so uh, people have adopted a wait and see attitude to see what happens in the next three or four years. And don't you think some people should bear a responsibility for this? People like Obasanjo, people like uh, Bakari, people like uh, um, those people who advocated that Buhari should come in and Jonathan was messed up 
and was even uh, was uh, demonized and chased out of power. And now, well, that's that, that's going too far. I, I was one of those who actively advocated for Buhari. You know, he, the credentials we thought he had uh, from going back to 1984 persuaded us that he was going to be better uh, than Jonathan. Jonathan was terrified to be a head of state. He was ineffective. You know, he didn't uh, conduct the affairs of the state like a head of state ought to. And uh, Nigeria is not a weak state. It needs a strong leader. Jonathan was not a strong leader. I can say this over and over and over again. And so we believed that Buhari would be the answer to our prayers. But he came by and and uh, defied all expectations and turned backwards and began to run the relay race backwards uh, to, to base. You know, all the plans the Fulanis had right before Nigeria came to be as a nation state are now being implemented under Buhari. He doesn't have a lot to lose, you know, after serving uh, uh, in, 19, in 2023. He might live for another five or 10 years, but by then the damage had been done. And that's why he is doing his best. You know, all the Fulani see him as the last hope uh, to, 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 to fulfill their desire on Nigeria. Make it a Fulani state. Make it a Fulani state at any cost. That's the mandate, and that's what Buhari is implementing. But he may not survive. Uh, Abacha did not survive with his plans for Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria is a resilient state, and uh, we will outlive him. You know, I can guarantee that. So why, why, what, what, what in this sense here is responsible for us not practicing the federal system of government as it should be? Because power is so concentrated at the center. And that's the reason why all this is uh, very, is happening every day. I, I think we will involve, we will involve. Uh, mistakes were made under the military. They created a constitution that favors that favored only one section of the country. It appeared the rest of the country were asleep when these things were being put into the constitution. Uh, now, we, we, we find ourselves to be at a corner where we cannot move forward and we cannot move backwards. So something has to give in one way or the other. Either there is a war or there is mass resistance or something has to happen to change it. But talking about it will not bring about a change because those who are interested in maintaining the status quo are hell-bent on maintaining that status quo at any cost whatsoever. So those who have been oppressed will either say no or accept the status quo the way it is. So there are no two ways about it. And finally, Mr. B, if uh, the necessary structure and law is put in place, will regional force be workable in Nigeria? So as you may, we, we practice the federal government uh, that is states in the, in the constitution, we practice the way it should be. Will it be workable in Nigeria, given <laughs> our different <laughs> ethnic nations or nationalities in Nigeria? Will it be workable? Well, uh, well, it, it, it may work, but it will take a long time to work. Right now, we have the state electoral commissions under the control of the state governors. I'm not aware of any opposing political party that had won a single vote, a single position under those elections conducted by the state electoral commissions. That tells you that if the police is placed in the hands of a state governor, he Maybe would she's... certainly use it for his own end. You know, but we have the United States to, cop, uh, to copy from. They have a national guide that can override and overrule a state police when the need uh, arises. And so we can start with that type of model, create state police force, but have a national federal force that is stronger and capable of overriding, over, overruling a state police force. Yeah, but it would take a little bit of tinkering, but it's the right way to go but we need the resources, we need to reallocate the way the federal revenue is shared so that the states that are unable to pay their teachers now will have enough money to be able to dedicate to security and uh, pay the police. Indeed, it Obi. Obi, thank you so much for coming to this program. And uh, as usual, um, we, we have uh, given this a good uh, uh, discussion 
regional force in Nigeria have workable of whose interests? Obi Nziadi Bey, thank you for honoring our invitation. Thank you, Joe. Thank you and for having us. And viewers across the world watching us, this is Platform Media International Political Arena. And my guest is Obiunzi Adibe. I would like to sign off and say happy day. Uh, have a good night, rest. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.